I know Andy and I were talking last week about, um, you know, the confusion around the different styles of yoga. Mm. You know, there seems to be so many different, um, you know, avenues and offerings and this and that. Like, can you sort of provide some clarity for, for both of us and everyone listening around, like, just a 101 lesson on that? <laughs> yeah, what are the various sure. types? Sure. What are the various types, like the differences between them and maybe which one, which type is better for which type of person or sure. should everyone be doing everything? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, so, so classically, you know, there are many different forms of yoga. Um, I like to think of Hatha yoga is an umbrella term. Uh, and then everything kind of, kind of, you know, raindrops of styles that drop down from this particular, you know, and some yoga is, has nothing to do with physical, physical asana, you know, yoga of the heart, bhakti, you know, um, but let's just talk about uh, I, what I think, you know, are each, each of these raindrops and to help it make sense, um, you know, you know, we have our big, heavy, you know, ploppy uh, raindrops and then we have our really light ones, you know, so we'll go through that kind of spectrum. And so if, if we're thinking about something gentle, um, you know, a restorative yoga, a yin yoga, where we're more passively um, stretching, placing ourselves in the postures uh, and allowing time to do the work and, uh, you know, perhaps gravity as well as our own awareness of what we're holding and giving it time to release, you know, so we're moving into ligaments, tendons, all the, you know, deeper stuff beyond the, the, the muscle. Um, so if you wanted something more gentle like that, and then, you know, of course we have other practices, you know, the big, big, heavy range up ones you might call like a, an Ashtanga practice, you know, um, Ashtanga itself uh, ha has, you know, kind of set series. Uh, so those set series in terms of the sequence, you know, is practiced over and over again. And uh, each time really uh, when you're moving through the sequence classically practiced, once you hit a shape that you can't do, you just stay there mm -hmm. until you get it, you know? Right. And, and, you know, so that would be a, a, what's called a Mysore practice. And uh, Mysore only to, uh, to, to reference the place where it's being practiced mm -hmm. in India. And so, you know, they have primary series and secondary series. I, I, I only think two or three persons on the earth are on, on fourth series. So, and that can be a very helpful practice, say, if, you know, when you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's really great to see progress, mm -hmm. right? And that's practice individually. Um, and a teacher will come to each individual and work with you wherever you are, you know? Um, done in community, um, ideally. So we have that big, heavy, you know, and on that heavier ploppy and like a Bikram practice or a hot yoga practice, um, you know, Bikram had his 20 something set series um, that he tried to uh, copyright, but it didn't work out. Anyway, so, <laughs> you know, who, who owns yoga? Come on, yeah. you know, um, but, and it, it, you know, but, you know, again, personalities come into play all those kinds of things. So we have these things and then we have these kind of, you know, subdivided groups in between. If we're, you know, referencing a more modern, you know, uh, you know, we have our flows and power yoga and X, Y, and Z, um, but all under the umbrella of Hatha yoga. Um, I hope that answered the question. Uh, and they're just like kind of stylistically different you know, but also, you know, depending on if you wanted more gentle practice to something that might be um, a little bit more intense. I had, I had a student once and she, she moved on, to, you know, I, I, I'm not really interested in a, a, a hot practice, um, but I've done it. And, you know, it does do different things to the body, you know, when you're amping up the temperature in the room, as well as the humidity level, mm -hmm. different things are being worked, right? And for me, um, I find that that is disconnecting a little bit sometimes only to the degree that we're relying on the heat for stretch. Um, 
instead of building an internal heat. So again, that's only my personal philosophy about, about the way I like to enter into practice or how I hold court for people. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, I've done it and I love it too, you know, and it, it's, it's, it has a place in my life, you know? So it's like each says all these different tools. And when you know what, to, you know, from a moment by moment, you know, you can pick the tool that you need for the time. Can I ask you, I'm, I'm just really curious about this. Uh, I, I've heard um, about the concept of samadhi and I've sometimes heard uh, yoga described as like a process to that maybe culminates in eventually reaching samadhi. But you earlier on, you, you when we were talking about the point of yoga very early in the podcast, you mentioned that like, we shouldn't be like looking for a finish line. We shouldn't be grasping for some external like thing that we're trying to reach. Um, so why do I often see yoga described as like this maybe eight step process or whatever that, that eventually leads to this state oh, samadhi? And, and how do you reconcile that it's like we shouldn't be grasping for something external, but it's often described as like having that end point? Mm, mm. It's a great question. Um, so, and maybe the, maybe also you can tell for the listeners what what is samadhi. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. So samadhi is enlightenment, is nirvana. It's the pinnacle of our practice, if, if, right. if you will, you know, mm -hmm. um, where, where we're fully there and, you know, we've touched the divine and all of these things, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I, when I first, you know, and in terms of the um, eight steps, process that you're referring to um i believe that you're referring to the eight limbfold path of yoga yeah. you know um and so when we think about that it does feel like the rungs of a ladder you know the 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 yamas and niyamas you know asana you know and then we start moving into more heady stuff of, of yeah. dar dharana of concentration of dhyana of meditation and then a samadhi, right? Yeah. So it sounds, it, it feels like this thing that we have to get up to and, and, and arrive at. Right. Um, but that, to me, uh, and for me at the beginning, you know, I was like, okay, you know, this makes sense. And I'm going to step into this. I'm going to do this thing. So when I first started yoga, that's what I thought, you know, that it was like climbing a ladder, you know, um, like a line, you know from point A to point B, you know, mm. now I have to get somewhere. And then as I continued practicing, you know, I thought of it more like a circle, you know, mm -hmm. I can enter in, use it, asana, I can think of it, I can enter in for meditation, I, you know, I can enter in any point, but even a circle says that there's some space and you have to get somewhere, you know? Yep. Now, my practice, I see it more instead of a point to point, a line or a circle, a shape, I see it as a dot. Hmm. Um, and so for me, it's to be more here now, you know? So if, if that makes sense, but that, that to me symbolically in my own process um, and evolution of understanding what it does for me, Mm -hmm. You know, so, and again, you know, it's a, I think it's a really natural process, you know, but um, the point is that we don't have to go anywhere. We have everything, yeah, that we need right now. Maude, we talked a few weeks ago about, you know, sort of the division in society where we are now. Um, you know, I feel like we are labeling so many different sides, right, with people today. And so, you know, we could, you know, you could say like vegan meat eater, you know, Democrat, Republican, you know, vaccinated, unvaccinated, you can keep creating this divide. My question to you is, you know, how do we start bringing people back together as one collective um, instead of making that divide bigger, meaner, filled with hate and not love? Where do you see as a starting point for that? We love one human at a time. We meet them face to face, one person at a time. We hug them, we love them, we talk to them, we listen to them. Um, I think that that 
you know, while it's, it's, it's a longer process, um, it becomes much more meaningful. Um, what, what's happened is that, you know, because we have such large systems, we, we begin to get away from each other. You know, we stop interfacing on a human level, right? And, and, and even this right here, which again, it is a tool, but it is not my one tool, you mm -hmm. know? And so for, for me, it's just really one individual at a time, bringing them into the fold, welcoming them, you know, isolation does horrible things to our brains, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it is received like a cut you know, in the same arena of the brain. Uh, and so when we are isolated or we are divided and we feel separate, um, we feel like we've been punched in the gut to the brain. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we keep promoting these labels, uh, we make everyone feel different, you know, and that we can't understand each other. And that's, that's where we really have to reverse it. For me, you know, my process is to meet one person at a time, you know, to use, you know, wise communication, you know, our, our dialogue style has gotten really, you know, not so pretty, you know, and I think that um, there is a more elegant way in which we can interface with each other, you know, the words we utter is a vibration. It's a feeling tone. Um, and we need to be much more conscious of the way we communicate our styles of communication, what divides us and what connects us, you know? Yeah, um, I think to your point, uh, um, you know, when you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, um, sometimes it's someone that's in a different tribe as you, maybe a different political affiliation or or whatever. Um, but when you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, you find out that you're a lot more similar to them than you are different. Um, and we draw all these dividing lines, you know, that Josh was talking about in society and that you were talking about there with all of our tribalism and stuff. But when you actually do meet someone and just talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, you find out that you're, you're very similar and they're actually a really good person, despite being on some other team, so to speak, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're built on a culture of you know, judgment and comparisons and all, all of these things. But when we really, really look at another human, what are we seeing, you know, um, past the body, past the, you know, all the labels, you know, but you have to be willing to see a person and we can, we can, and we do it and then we do it again and then we do it again. And that's how we grow a wiser society. How can listeners learn more about Yoga Shala and Clinton uh, New York? Mm -hmm. If they're interested in becoming members, uh, whether it's private sessions or group sessions, um, mm -hmm. how can they become a part of your community? Um, well, please feel free to reach out to me um, at yo yogashala at yahoo.com. Uh, I'm also uh, on, on my website at yogashalaclinton.com. Um, and yeah, yeah, uh, any of those platforms will um, provide a way for you to communicate with me as well. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, I'm a human being. <laughs> and, um, and I do have a business page on Facebook, which seems to be um, a little bit more uh, utilized and accessed uh, in the area. But yeah, uh, go to my website to find out about private sessions, to find out about weekly classes, as, special, as well as special events and workshops. And I do have a healing community offering, which are always free by donation, um, bringing in other um, healers uh, in our community, herbalists, meditators. Wow. Um, we just had uh, the mobile monastery here um, from Chattaqua, uh, Vermont, from the um, Maple. The, they're kind of modern monks, um, and that was a beautiful offering. So there are many different ways uh, in which to interface. Um, I have a wide variety of classes, so that big arc of something gentle as well as something a little bit more dynamic, and you can always pick from anywhere in between. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Man. Um, we hope you have a great weekend and um, 
You too. Cheers, cheers to future success. So yes. thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you both. Have a great day. Yes. You too. You too, man. Bye.